Right then, let's go and explore this Tunnel Boy machine and let's start off at the very start of the machine. This is where the cutting head would have been. This machine has finished its journey as this machine ran from Greenwich all the way to Bermondsey. It's now arrived at Bermondsey Chambers Wharf and the cutting head has been removed. So sadly we don't get to see it with this cutting head on but we do get to see what is directly behind the cutting head which is all of the pipes and the hydraulic systems. The hydraulics is what was used to turn the cutting head around as well as to drive it forwards. Then all of the pipes and part of the slurry system that takes all of the debris from the tunnel board machine and turns it into a slurry and then gets pumped all the way to the back of the machine and then pumped all the way back to the initial construction site. So then let's take a look at the diagram of the tunnel boy machine. So we start at a cutting head and we're going to be looking at every single part all the way to the back. The next Next part we take a look at is the very start of the machine, the hydraulic cutter control. This is what controls the cutting head as well as running a slurry system. Tunnel boring machine urbex. This is fucking amazing, it's an actual tunnel bore. I never thought I'd ever see one of these. And let's take a look at this large motor which is part of the slurry system. So then we now continue along the tunnel boy machine and the next part we're going to be taking a look at is the driver's cab. This is what controls the cutting head as well as managing the pressures on the systems that propel the system forwards and this controls the angles to the radius of how it cuts which is how it makes the tunnel get bored with the correct bend radius in it so it can go around corners. I never thought I, I ne literally never thought I'd see one of these. There's your controls for it. Logic cabinet. I wonder if it runs Leicester controls. I doubt it. Look at all that logic. Any mechanic buttons? So then continue along the tunnel boy machine and the next part we take a look at is the hydraulic thrusters which is what propels the tunnel boy machine forwards. These hydraulics push back on the segments which have just been placed and push the tunnel head and in turn the rest of the machine forwards. Changing the amount of hydraulic pressure on either side is how you control the radius of the bend that it cuts the tunnel in. Oh the hydraulics, big motor is what powers it forwards. Hydraulic pumps. <laughs> this is the best thing I've ever seen in the entire time I've been urbexing for the last 13 years. Here are more logic cabinets. Lots and lots of logic cabinets. Pipes here to shove out all the dirt. Here, a little door opens. So here you've got more logics. Go here, the way it powers forwards. You see here, this is your tunnel ball. It travels along the concrete. It goes forwards. So then, the next part we're going to be taking a look at is where the trains come in. The trains bring the concrete segments into the tunnel boy machine. The segment trains then pick up these segments and then move them into position. The tunnel boy machine has two phases. The cutting phase where it's propelled forwards using the hydraulic thrusters. Then the segment insertion phase where the cutting head is turned off and then the segment cranes then slot all of the segments into position. Then the whole process starts again. That's the thing that lifts up the pieces. Oh wow. Look at that. Lifts up your piece and then somehow slots it into place. Pick up the slabs to put the slabs in. Oh, fucking hell. This is crazy. This is fucking crazy. So as it goes forwards, the slabs have to be lifted into place. You see the gap there, so you lift it up and shh, put the slab in as the machine rolls its way forwards. I can't believe this the amount of hydraulic stuff they've got on that. We've got our cables to lift the thing forwards.
We can see there the wheels on the TPM where it rolls forwards. Oh, it's a train in there this time. That wasn't there last time. Yeah, that's new. and continue along the tunnel work machine and the next part we get to is the refreshment cabin. This is pretty much the cruise rest area. So continuing on, the next part of it is the equipment and maintenance area. This part has all of the tools to maintain the tunnel boy machine. This is such a large tunnel boy machine and it's well over 100 meters from end to end. There's a lot to it. So there's a lot of stuff just to keep it maintained. And now we go along to the site office. And the next part we take a look at is the emergency rescue pod. In fact, there's two emergency rescue pods here. Only one of them has the red light flashing. So this is the primary pod that everyone goes into. If ever the tunnel boy machine was to dig into water and the whole thing was to start flooding. Let's take a look at the emergency rescue pod. This pod has everything in it for the crew to live inside this pod for several days waiting to be rescued. This pod has an oxygen supply in it, supplying a crew with oxygen, as well as also individual oxygen and carbon dioxide respiration equipment under the seats which a crew could use if ever they needed to. This pod is very small and although it's very fun to go and have a look in it, if you were actually trapped in this pod while the tunnel was filling up with water, that would be very claustrophobic. Welcome to the escape pod. The tunnel's flooding, we all have to get in the pod. What are they doing then? Just sitting in it? Yeah, yeah to make it this good. It's nice and cool. It is nicer, Dad. Oh, imagine they've got oxygen, bruv. Let's go some oxygen. Let's get high. So continue along, along to the second emergency rescue pod. Open well, up a challenge in the evacuation pod. The red flashy light up there. The sink here and the emergency escape pod. Seats here. You can sit but you can't really sleep until you might be stuck in here for weeks while you're rescued. Water supply. You don't have much, do you, in your escape pod? I'm sure, I must provide food for them so they don't starve while I'm waiting. Can imagine sitting here if the tunnel collapsed and you're sitting here waiting to be rescued. This is very claustrophobic. And if you continue a longer tunnel for a machine, the next part is the equipment and maintenance area at the end of the machine. Up here. We've now reached the very back of the tunnel boy machine. This part also has cranes and stuff to lift up various equipment off of the various trains coming in. So if they need any equipment to be taken in by train, this is where the equipment would end up in this area.
and we've now reached the very back of the tunnel boring machine. So then, make sure you stay tuned to the next episode of Tunnels, because in the next episode, episode 6, we are going to be continuing the walk beyond the tunnel boy machine. We are going to walk the entire tunnel that this boy machine has just dug, and we're going to walk the entire thing all the way from Chambers Wharf to Greenwich. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>